Hi, I'm Marty Mosley, head of the Total TV Network. If you're asking where can I find more programming like this, let me help you out. We have 10 more episodes of On the Air. Same energy, same compelling stories, all hot topics. Call us at 1-888-TOTAL-TV to find out more. Now enjoy this episode of On the Air. You're watching Total TV. Hi, I'm Michael. Today on the Total TV Network, we look at the problems of trying to fit in. Do you know where you belong? Hi there, I'm Tommy. Hi, I'm Melissa. You're in a Bible study right now, sitting in a group or at home. Do you feel like you fit in? Do you feel like you fit in at school? Are there some times when you just feel you don't fit in anywhere? Then stay tuned. You're part of a very big group. Today we're asking, what do you do to fit in? And why is it so hard? Come on. My whole purpose in life, <laughs> sad to say, is probably trying to fit in with the right crowd, trying to be cool, trying to have all the right friends. You know, it's sad, but the first thing that people notice about you is how you look and the way you're dressed and everything, and that's kind of how they judge you. If you have something and someone else doesn't, then that makes you one step higher on the rung of life. I base my worth on the number of friends I have. It just seems like there's always going to be someone above you that you, like, have to please. You can be a part of almost any group if you just act the way they want you to. If everyone, all your friends are drinking and partying. Deep down inside you, you want to do that too. And in order to fit in, you got to do what everyone else is doing. At my school, people think it's popular to cuss, and I admit I do it very much so, and I know I shouldn't do it, but, you know, I do it anyway. You don't want to look like some big dork. They did all they can to try and fit in with some crowd, and even if it meant changing themselves. If I don't act a certain way to people, then they won't think that I'm good enough for them. I struggle with thinking that I'm not going to be accepted if I'm who I am. When you feel like no one likes you and no one cares about you, you feel worthless, and you feel like you have no value. I place a high value on what people think about me. Everybody. People I don't even know. I care what they think that I look like, if they think I look tacky, if they think I look stupid, and they don't think my hair's a certain way. I'd say I'm in the popular group, maybe. Um, the cheerleader, the jocks. I'm in the group where people judge people and look at people for what they have on and what they wear. Brand names are a big deal. Gap or J. Crew. We see somebody that has on a dumb outfit, somebody says something about it. <laughs> We're pretty honest. Everybody in this group cares about what people think about them big time. This portion of On the Air is brought to you by Dr. Spark Meyer's Home Cloning Kit. It's the easy way to make friends. So what you're saying, it's very important to fit in. Survival of the fittest. Being accepted determines what you wear, what you say, and what you do. And how awful it feels when you don't fit in. Check out these next two teens, Donald and Rachel. I remember when I was going to school, I wanted to play basketball. I was just trying to have fun. I guess they didn't like me because I wasn't good, you know. I'm tall, but I wasn't good. Everything I did, they found something bad about it. And they all just came around, and they were like, yeah, Donald, you shoot like a girl. And they're like shoving me and pushing me. And they're like, yeah, you're stupid, yeah. And you lay up funny, yeah. And I just like, forget it. And I just stopped going to the practices. I stopped playing basketball all together for a while. My brother was in a gang, you know, and I seen all his friends, and I thought it's cool, you know. They don't worry about being accepted by anybody. They look the carefree, they look happy, and they're having fun, and I want to be just like them. So I, I tag along, dress like them, talk like them, act like them, anything I could do to fit in. Basically, I was their, like, their chump. I did whatever they wanted me to, to be accepted by them. I wanted to look, like, good in their eyes. I wanted to 
be their friend. I want them to like me because I had nobody else to like me. I want, I just wanted a friend. Who said it was cool to fit in? Probably not you. I mean, come on. If you don't fit in, you're nothing, right? Uh, that is ridiculous. Einstein was a dork. Lincoln, a geek. Mozart, a punk. Even Jesus, God himself, was labeled a rebel, a radical, an outcast. The only true worth you have is what God gives you. Hey, that's good enough for me. But if you want to fit in with a bunch of bozos, go join the circus. I guess I'm kind of insecure about the way I look. I don't feel like I look as pretty as all the real pretty people. And I worry about, you know, whether I get invited to these parties versus those parties. I was always thinking, how do I, you know, how do I please others? How do I fit in? How can I be cool? What makeup can I wear this time? You know, I was in drill team and I did all that kind of stuff. I got a lot more attention from the people. I got accepted into the in crowd. I got to be the person that I'd always wanted to be. I was a ditz. I was so bimbo-ish and I cussed a lot because that's what a lot of other people did. And I just tried to be real stupid and real bubbly even though that wasn't really what I was feeling at the time. I actually became that kind of a stupid person. After a while, I lost myself. There's a lot of people who uh, started thinking that maybe Rachel's not this good, perfect little Christian. She might be kind of a slut and stuff. And I got called that a lot. And that's kind of what made me think, what am I doing here? Even though I was surrounded by a lot of people, I felt lonely inside, even though I was part of the conversation, I was part of the group. They wouldn't have missed me if I wasn't there. Have you ever felt invisible like Rachel, alone in the middle of a crowd? Or like Donald, humiliated by the people you hang out with? It's hard to talk about those feelings out loud. I mean, sometimes you feel so desperate. In our next story, Amber would do anything to be accepted by the in crowd. I believed that being in the in the group the popular group of people that I would be happier, that everything would be okay, that nothing would go wrong for me. I basically did anything that I thought I needed to do to myself to look like them. I would cut my hair like they did. I would dress like they did. I starved myself to look like they did. I mostly alternated between starving and if I did eat, I would throw up. I got into a binging, purging type of routine at first, all the attention I got really made me feel good, made me feel beautiful and loved. And when I got the attention and had the validation of others' opinions of me, I believed myself to be thin and pretty. But pretty soon, I started thinking that it wasn't enough. The thinner I got, the more attention I would get, and the more friends I would have, and the more love I would have, and everyone would like me, and it would, everything would be happy. And so I decided that I needed to go further and further and further until I didn't really have a goal. It was just to get thinner and thinner and thinner. <laughs> Whenever I looked at myself, I saw ugly, I saw fat everywhere. Um, all over my body. I just hated my entire body, but I looked ill. My face was drawn, I had circles under my eyes. I had no muscle or anything left. I was just skin and bones. And I got to where I was throwing up around 80 times a day. When I started getting very close to rock bottom, it was not about anybody else anymore. It was about food, 24-7, thinking about it afraid of it, 
um, just wanting to die. I was totally self-absorbed. I had no friends left to try and fit in with. I had alienated them all. I lost most of my friendships. I destroyed them myself. I don't believe it was on purpose, but my reactions to their concern really ended up making them feel like they had done something wrong when in act all actuality they were doing exactly what I would want them to do. They were loving me. A recent magazine survey asked women, what would make you the happiest? And 42% of them answered weight loss. Now check this out. Did that make Amber happy? So far we've heard from Krissa, who's in the popular group and admits to saying some cruel things. Donald got tired of being everybody's chump in a gang, and we heard from Rachel, who changed her personality to fit in. And Amber, who's anorexic. Now we'd like you to stop the tape and discuss these two questions. First, why do you think that teens do these things? And why do they need people's approval so much? And second, what advice would you give Donald, Rachel, or Amber, or the people you know who are like them? And when you're done, come on back. On the Air is brought to you by the American Impress Card. Be more. You don't know me, but someday you might. I can fit into any crowd, anywhere. No one will even know that I'm there. Why? Because I'm a nobody. <laughs> Because when I want recognition, I just whip out this, the American Impress Card. It has more buying power than I will ever need. What's this? We don't accept this. The American Impress Card. Don't leave home without it. Addiction is sweeping our nation. It is of epidemic proportions. And it could be as close as your home. Small group Bible study. The word. Is it in you? A message from the Total TV Network. Okay, we're back. And we've been talking about fitting in somewhere, anywhere. And the loneliness you feel when you don't. Now let's take a moment to hear from our expert, Neil McClendon. Neil fits in right with us. Cool jacket, huh? Especially that swoosh. Did you catch that? You know how much I paid for that swoosh? Nothing, really. See, because I borrowed this jacket, but the guy who bought it, he paid a lot of cash for that emblem. Trust me. And why? Because the swoosh is fresh, that's why. I mean, Nike spends zillions of advertising dollars to let you guys know that. They've got every pro athlete around the world wearing their gear. And they're fresh, their stuff's fresh, and so when you cough up the chains to sport that, then guess what? That makes you fresh too, boys and girls. That's stupid. Well, of course it is. How can a simple swoosh be that valuable? I mean, how can it make you more valuable as a person simply because you wear it? But we do the same thing whenever we let other people determine how valuable we are. You know what I mean? I mean, we're always comparing ourselves to other people, trying to win their approval, trying to fit in, as if we needed some swoosh on our soul to be worth anything. So you heard the kids in the top of the show talking about trying to fit in, and maybe that's your story, too. You feel pulled one way by your friends and another way by your parents, and the media wants this, and your church wants that, and everyone's telling you, be yourself. But if you're not wearing what everyone else is, then you're in deep weeds. I mean, how can you be yourself when you're still trying to figure out who you are? 
See, that's the problem. God doesn't base your value on how thin you are, how well you play ball, how many friends you have, what symbol you're wearing on your sneakers. He considers you valuable because He made you. He loves you for who you are. And do you know how valuable you are in His eyes? See, He was willing to pay Jesus for you. That's the price tag that you have on you, the Son of God. So on those days when your clothes are stupid or your, your hair's flat or when you didn't study for the test that you know you're going to bomb, when your parents are yelling at you or maybe they're just ignoring you, remember the price tag is always the same. It's Jesus. Your value never changes. I think I was real lost. I didn't know which way to go. In order to look good and feel good about myself, I had to go out there and do something that everybody else thought was cool. I didn't think I was good enough inside. So I had to, I had to have other people tell me. Basketball, that's the number one thing I wanted to do. I wanted to be on the court, you know, playing with the good guys, being known, having everybody screaming, you know making that last shot to win the game. Maybe I just wanted it to be too much. You know, a lot of kids feel, if I work hard for something, I'll get it. But no, I, I didn't. I thought I made it. Felt like I was nothing. Like I was nobody. I came home and shut my door and just sat with my back against the door and you know, I started crying and when the kids in the crowd that you know the people that use drugs came up to me and you know said hey you've been looking real down lately and all this and you said you know hey try this and at first I was like no 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 then I went home overnight and thought about it woke up that next morning and said hey why not you know it's a new day just 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 this day it's a new day that's when I smoked marijuana, smoked pot, and, and I liked it. Um, I, I just kind of let my, let my mind escape from reality, and it kind of just made me feel like I didn't need basketball, like I didn't need to be accepted. And I'd come down off my high, and my problems would still be there. I wanted to fit in somewhere, and when I felt I could fit in with the drug users, anybody can fit in with those people. You don't have to be nobody. Something funny's been going on over the last decade or two. You see, self-esteem, well, it's become big stuff. I mean, school curriculum is packed with it. Every TV talk show seems to center on it. And that's the odd thing. You see, all this talk about self-esteem, yada, 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 just gives you one more thing to fail at. Okay, maybe you learn to play the game, you say the right words about being confident and talented young person with a bright future and a great ACT score. But Deep down inside, you still feel like dirt. Look at Tim. I mean, he knew all about self-esteem. He could make 100 on the self-esteem pop quiz, but he still felt bad about not fitting in with the basketball crowd. What's up with that? And those feelings? Well, they dragged him right down into drug use. Maybe, okay, maybe we shouldn't be talking so much about having a good self-image as having a realistic self-image. See, that's the one thing I like about the Bible. It gives a straight story. No pampering, no coddling, no, well, I think, hush, just the facts. So what are the facts? First, God created you, and he loves you. In fact, he's dying to have a relationship with you, literally. Remember that price tag he put on you? Jesus. Second, you're a sinner. Newsflash, okay? You're gonna mess up. God doesn't like it when we do. It's not his plan, but he realizes who you are. Third, our sins, they don't keep God from loving us. He reaches out in grace to forgive us, to change us so that you can do better in the future, which means fourth, nothing, and I mean nothing, that you do can make God love you more or less. See, he knows you inside and out, and he still loves you. And finally, God has plans for you. One of my favorite verses is Philippians 1.6. It says this, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you, well, 
He will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. You see, He's working on you, and He'll keep at it. So there, that's your realistic self-image. You have immense value to God, but hey, you're not perfect, okay? Yet, thanks to Him, you're getting there. Here's a Bible story maybe you haven't heard before. In song, David sounds like a country western singer. My dog ran away, I'm feeling so blue. I don't understand it, my cat left me too. You see, David wrote psalms about what was happening in his life and what was happening in the hoods. Betrayal, abandonment, sometimes he had no homies to hang with. I'm so whoa, whoa, lonely. But he always knew where to turn when he was feeling lower than a snake's belly because David always finished his psalms the same. Trust in God, he's faithful and true. So what should you do when you feel like you don't fit in? Here are four things. First, don't let the crowd tell you who you're supposed to be. You don't need their approval. You see, God has given you a unique personality. Let him show you how to use it. Next, get a realistic view of your own value before God. Remember, He knows you're not perfect, but He still loves you. So you can learn to bounce back from your own dumb mistakes, knowing that God, He's not giving up on you. Third, do something good for someone else. Novel concept here. You see, if you feel like you're worthless, reach out and help someone else who needs help. I mean, look around. How can you help others who feel that they don't fit in. Then you'll have something to feel good about. And fourth, look for your role in God's plans. The Bible teaches that when we become Christians, God gives each of us a spiritual gift. That's some kind of talent to be used for His glory. What interest do you have? How has God already been using you? You see, God wants you on His team, and He's got lots of stuff to do. You do fit in. Whether you feel like it, or not. See, you fit into God's love and you fit into His plans. And it doesn't matter whether you're wearing a cool swoosh like this. Let's go back to some kids you heard from earlier. I look back and I see how far down I was, how far down that staircase. I mean, I was at the bottom. And so now I guess I've discovered who the real Rachel is. and. I don't have to be lonely and I don't have to feel unaccepted. And when I stand there and I talk with my friends, I feel like these are my friends. These are people who are going to talk to me. And if I tell them something that's going on in my life, they're going to comfort me and they're going to be there for me all the time. I look back on all the stuff that I did with them and it, all I did was pull me down. Who needs friends like that if they're going to get me in trouble, you know? I think I, I can make more friends, man. I see now that it's not all about to be accepted. I can have friends and be who I am, be myself without being a gang member, wearing color, and all that other stuff. I mean, it's just not me. I'm tired of being something I'm not. Neil gave us some great things to remember about who we are. I mean, look around. There are a lot of kids trying to fit in, just like you. Well, we're out of time, so see you soon. Bye. I'm Michael. Don't miss the next two Bible studies in our Leader's Guide. Dig in deeper in your Bible, and we'll see you next week on the air.